Welcome, welcome. This is the Hungarian project for all our surprises or something like that. Today's episode will feature Colombian news. And you know what's funny about Colombia? So the thing about Hungarian politics is that I don't know any names. I know I only know a few. But it's as if like I was watching uh, CNN about Iraqi news. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know who these people are. They just keep showing up. Every time I think that I know all the necessary names, something, sorry, someone new comes up and, well, like today. Gurnador, who is apparently a member of the MSP, left-wing political party, said that according to Matolci György, who we all know who is, you know, the financial minister of Hungary, so according to Matolci György, he said, it is possible to live comfortably earning only 47,000 Hungarian forints. Well, I don't know much about living. I've only lived here for a couple of decades, but I believe that starving to death is not really an option for being comfortable. I mean, I have heard that it is not very comfortable to starve to death. The problem is that um, if you own a house, you might be able to just pay off all the bills from 47,000 forints, especially in winter. And obviously we're not talking about traveling to Cuba for fun, obviously, but uh, you can't do that even uh, from 100,000 forints a month. But, like last time and the time before that and the time before that, basically in every episode which featured Matolci György, we learned that he is capable of and he has a tendency to just say stuff. And I don't know if he is that stupid or he wants us to be that stupid. So apparently, Gunador has some guts, because after the end of his speech, he put down 47,000 forints on Matolci's desk and asked the financial minister to try to live out of this money for a month. Apparently, he rejected the idea, which, well, is a ridiculous idea, because he couldn't do that. Is way too comfortable to just uh, play a game like this. Now, whenever Fidesz, the political party, is offended by somebody, somehow, they always grab somebody to just make statements on behalf. They have of the found Chefalvi Zoltan, who is who? Well, I don't know. But he said that um, I quote this I am sure that anyone can live earning 47,000 forints. Uh, yes, it is sure that anyone can live out of 47,000 forints. Uh, I, I suppose, yes, made this statement to the national television. Now, obviously, I have to be frank with you. 47,000 forints is absolutely not enough to live on. I said that, but I have to say that before this year, this amount of money was actually 28,500 forints, which is almost impossible. But let's not be joking here. Like I said the last time, no one really lives out of 47,000. They work in the black market. I <laughs> mean, come on. We, we shouldn't play games like this. And apparently, According to the politicians, they play some games and they don't play other games. So, what do I know? I know that Motolci Djurge is uh, quite rich, but also tries to operate in the black market, because apparently he has one and a half million forints in cash, yeah. and several investment bonds, several um weekend houses and flats so and uh, he has interest in banks like the Unicredit Bank who uh, was asked to invest those private pension savings which were taken from the people last year 
So you may see a connection there. Or maybe there isn't. Maybe it's just a pure coincidence. Who knows? Well, on the other hand, in the EU Parliament, there was a um, really, really long session about Hungarian politics because apparently they don't like our unorthodox way of doing things so again with much patience they try to persuade us just to give in and finally agree with the European Union's constitution which apparently according to Novracic Tibor who I don't know is it's the deputy the deputy prime minister the deputy prime minister of course until this time i never heard of him but well you know it's a nice it's like kind of like magic if you really think about this i mean there is a guy just appearing from nowhere and he says things but these things are very much like what Orban Victor would say, but I'm not trying to point out a connection here, please believe me. It's just very similar to that. Anyway, so apparently there was a private meeting between Novacis Tibor and Neil Neely Kroos, who is a sort of, uh, well, somebody in the European Parliament, and uh, in this private session meeting, whatever you want to call it, uh, Novracic agreed on every term. So when they said that, you guys, you really need to have some sort of free press. And he said, yeah, all right, yeah, sure, 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 we're gonna change that. And then there was something like this, you really should just um, stop gathering all the private things in your country under your influence. And he said, yeah, sure, no problem, no, no problem at all. Uh, we stop doing that, we give everything back. And it meant like this, and after, uh, when the when they, they went to the um, then they went to the official meeting, and Novracic didn't say any of these things. He said that we agree, we will agree on things like this, which is stated in the EU constitution, if it suits our government, if it it is allowed by our laws. The Hungarian government should explicitly and transparently ask the Council of Europe for a comprehensive opinion on the compliance of the media legislation and its application in practice with fundamental values and as enshrined in benchmark texts such as the European Convention on Human Rights. And second, and just as importantly, the Hungarian authorities should accept and implement any concrete recommendations that would be made by the Council of Europe. The Deputy Prime Minister promised those two things to me in our meeting two hours ago. He said, without resistance, I will follow those, um, th those uh, judgments of uh, the court. So I expect that on behalf of the Hungarian government, publicly commits to both as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, I have to give this to the European Union. They are extremely patient. I don't know why. Maybe they are very, maybe they need us for some reason, you know, market or, or I don't know, they suspect there's oil here. Uh, what do I know? What do I know? But uh, I know that for some, some strange reason they believe that they can help us or, or, or something like that and they can persuade us now they are willing to sacrifice a lot of time and maybe it's because the European Parliament doesn't work really fast really quickly and then they don't react quickly to stuff because if the European Union is so big or it's just that uh, they just give us time to I don't know adopt to the new climate or whatever but well we, we really should appreciate this patience because let me emphasize this one more time the laws some of the laws we are currently having here in this country are direct contradiction to the European Union's Constitution so and, and we are still in the European Union I mean imagine that um, it, 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 it this happened in I don't know the United States does that state 
are really would be really allowed to just function it's it's i don't know that's a real question i mean what if a uh, united usa state would just uh, say that well it's nice having the constitution of the us written by those very clever people but we don't really care about it anymore we have our own laws what the hell so anyway moving on so according to my sources in colombia we can have some nice and juicy details about the current situation now because we started this session a moment ago i would like to just begin with something easy and this something easy is the general financial status of people in colombia which is really really bad which is really really good yeah apparently this can happen in a country and the problem is that um, if we'd like to just imagine the lowest class the lowest financial class in colombia it would be like this a man carrying some junk on his shoulder while leading a donkey in the ruins which is called some sort of city cool isn't it i mean it's very romantic if you want to imagine the richest uh, person in colombia they are far far richer than anyone in hungary i currently know i mean they they, they some some you know some people could practically buy a a, a bunch of other people <laughs> okay now now uh, comparing Colombia to Hungary is quite easy we have this fine constitution we have the uh, law of the workforce and so on in Colombia there is no such a thing as laws for the working class so apparently if you want to be a racist like what you want to hire uh, only 20 year old nice white blonde girls well, apparently you can do that without any consequences if you want to do this in Hungary well they, you may be get you know you may get reported to the police and your company could shut down or you have to pay a fine so at least we are better than this yeah oh good lord we are better than this in some country wow what's the word but apparently this is not all they have a sort of strata system and you get classified uh, by in which place you live so if you live in the bad part of the city you belong to I don't know strata number one if you belong the finest part of the city you belong to strata number six which is really nice I don't really know I don't know yet that uh, if you can just move up classes or move down classes but apparently it's a kind of a strict system so um, I imagine that it's really hard to do that and uh, basically you if you want to see every sort of class or strata type in a city you only need a nice car and just 40 minutes of your time because if you start here and you end here you can see everything because they live next to each other again comparing to Hungary in Hungary there are uh, there is no strata system like this but uh, there is the, the, the lowest class and the highest class obviously but it's just a financial thing and if you want to see the the worst thing and the best thing the best thing in in Hungary uh, if you want to see the best thing you have to go to Budapest in a certain district and if you want to see the worst, you have to go far east uh, to the borders. So, well, yeah, we are, I believe we are a little bit better. Oh God, I don't want to compare us to Colombia because I believe it makes them look bad. Seriously. They are, um, what I experienced so far is just, they are really, really um, happy people, full of energy. And this is the complete opposite of Hungarians. We have creativity, obviously, but we have no energy to do stuff. So, so far we have learned that Colombia has this uh, strata system. They have the poorest and the richest. And I hope that by asking more and more questions, I will understand better. I will understand this situation way better than right now. But that's a start. So, 
and moving on. So, let's look at the basic structure of New Zealand. And by structure I don't mean geographical, but uh, political and financial. Because that's more interesting. Because we all, we all know that New Zealand is beautiful. So, um, apparently the highest rank can be achieved in New Zealand political system is actually the Queen of England, or the King of England, but naturally, as Queen Elizabeth, so it's a queen. Uh, the second next is uh, the governor, the general governor, or governor general. It's the, it's, it's, it's the governor general, who is uh, at this moment Sir Jerry Metoperi, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, and uh, he has, well, basically he has a sort of um, symbolic power over the nation because he conducts business in the name of Queen Elizabeth. Now, actually, who really rules New Zealand is the political parties. Right now, uh, the governing party is the National Party and its Prime Minister is John Key. The deputy leader is Bill English. <laughs> I love these names. Okay, now there are two opposing parties the Labour Party and the Green Party. Leader of the Labour Party is uh, David Sherir, and uh, Green Party's leaders are Russell Norman and well, 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 look at here, what do we have here? Materia or Mataira Ture. Well, I, it really doesn't help me. If I if I don't even uh, pronounce, if I can't even pronounce the name, I, I have no chance to remember it. But anyway, so there are leaders in the parties, so that's really nice. So the Green Party generally focuses on uh, environmental issues, which is nice. So basically, um, the the National Party is like Fidesz, except they do good stuff. The Labour Party is like MSP, and they, well, they are a bit better. And the Green Party is like LMP in Hungary, as I understand it. I may be correct, or I may be not. But I know that, uh, according to my knowledge, New Zealand doesn't have a radical right-wing party like Jobbik in Hungary. So. Do New Zealanders hate politicians? I'm gonna hate this answer, but no, they don't really have reason, according to my source in New Zealand. Which is a bit disappointing, because I'm so used to hating politicians, and when I, I will ask questions about Colombia, I know that I can express my hatred towards bad people in Colombia, but there's really nothing in New Zealand. Which is ironically a disappointing, because it's so, inexcellent, so unexpected. But anyway, it's so good to hear that there is a country out there uh, which actually can function. But they have that. I mean, New Zealand has that. And it's a um, probably about 160 billion New Zealand dollars, opposing to the 130, if I am correct, which is needed to rebuild Christchurch, you know, the damaged city in, you know, by the earthquake. Well, yeah. But this debt is growing, so New Zealand might have a chance. Um, Recently, there's been a vote about uh, whether uh, changing the, water, the current voting system of New Zealand or not. And I, I can tell you that that's wrong. I mean, that's physically wrong what you're doing. When you want to change the voting system, my dear friend, you don't vote for it. I mean, people don't want to just give you the power, you need to take it. Much like in Hungary, Fidesz changed the voting system without asking anybody. So apparently we're doing it right. <laughs> oh dear lord, what have we done? Apparently in New Zealand, they like to milk cows at midnight. Because the melatonin level in the milk is much higher than during the day. And this thing 
apparently could help you go to sleep easily. And there's been a study and cows really like it. Which is a strange study. A really strange study. Studying cows whether they like midnight milking or not. Well, New Zealand is a really strange country. But enough with the news. Let's learn some Hungarian. So, welcome to the 5 minute Hungarian. And today we are going to translate easy sentences. Now, they are going to be really easy, but this way we experience the true nature of the Hungarian language. Because much like Hungarians, sentences are not that easy. Let me just give you an example. The first sentence we are going to try is I don't like it. Now, to tell the truth, I, I couldn't find any easier sentence like this. I mean, there are a bunch of easier sentences like I go, but they are not really sentences. But this is a fairly good English sentence. I don't like it. It has a, a subject, an action and an object. And it's of course a negative, so uh, that's going to be interesting. But first of all, when we're trying to translate something, it's always better first to understand the sentence and after that just um, try to translate it, um, well not really word by word, but section by section. Because if you want to just uh, translate it word by word, it will look like this. In nem seret as. And however uh, good this might seem to you, it's not a proper Hungarian sentence. Let's just see why. So, uh, I say that asking certain questions could lead us to the solution and to the understanding why it is or how that how we could translate stuff how and, and why this sentence is bad okay now let's see the first question I always try to ask is what is the action in the sentence in this case the action is Seret. And furthermore, it's a negative, and if I think about negative in Hungarian, one word comes to mind, which is nem. And let's just look as this. Okay. Now, this is not complete because it doesn't say who doesn't like this thing. So the next question, naturally, who are we talking about? Now this is nice. To answer this, one must look at the first word in an English sentence, well, near almost the first word, word. So, and in this case, it is I. Now, let's see. Let's translate it to Hungarian. It's naturally says in, but this doesn't work because Hungarian doesn't use personal pronouns. So what I can do is just write this verb. Well, let, let's just leave this out right now. Uh, let's just um, I, I write the word, the verb, what we're talking about, seret, and I put an ending, but. It's not easy to put an ending because we have uh, several, let's say, modes in Hungarian. This, in this case, this is in, uh, in object mode because there is an object in the sentence. The rule is simple. If there is an object in the sentence, we are in object mode or accusative, if I know the technical term correctly. So it's not seretek, but seretem because that way, as you can see, we can put an object after the verb. Third question, 
what is the object? Because there is an object in the sentence, uh, this word requires, I mean, this word requires the object. So, the object is as. But remember, whenever we are in object mode, you have to put a T at the end of the object. So, what does this give us? Nem szeretem ezt. Which is almost uh, a perfect native Hungarian sentence. But if you remember, we talked about, I mean I hope we talked about a little bit, uh, the order of the words in a Hungarian sentence. And the order is um, basically the which comes first is just the most important thing in a sentence and normally the most important thing of the sentence almost all the time is the object because we don't like people we like objects let's just say that so there you go this is a good sentence even if you write this down you are far more closer to the truth than if you had written this down. I mean, this is not a good sentence. It's absolutely not a good sentence. All right. So, this is the perfect sentence. All right. Oh, God. There you go. So let's move on to this sentence. This time, well, go, things are going to be really easy, or at least easier than last, I mean, a minute ago, because now we know what we need to ask. First question is, is the action. What is the action here? Uh, the action here is the existence, which in Hungarian is rarely expressed, but this time it is. So, lenny. But the truth is, this is not enough, because much like in English, you don't just say I be, you do stuff with the words. And in this case, we're talking about you, so the word, or actually the verb, will be this. So you could say that the first question is a two-in-one situation. All right. Let's see the next question. Well, there's no object here, but there are words. For example, there is a place here. And the place is it. And the third one is actually a, the word for the question why. Now we can translate this easily. Um, let's see. Miért. There we go. So, you can do this from a dictionary. This one and this one. Now, the, the thing is that you just, above the line, you don't, you are not able to do things from the dictionary, or, or let, let me just say, just from the dictionary. All right. So, let's put them together. First, obviously, um, the Y. Then, it should be a vagy és itt. And this is a good sentence. This time I don't know what you might have done, but uh, I believe there is no other way than this. So the equivalent of why are you here is miért vagy itt. That's it. Alright, last sentence. Do you like cows? Now this sentence has more than one object, because we are talking about many cows. But when it comes to grammar, a few cow, a one, a one or you know, a ton of cows is just the same. This is one interesting object. Now, but let's do things according to plan. Action. Um, set it. Okay. Two. Who? 
szereted, because we're talking about you. And uh, the thing is why I chose this one is because I want to derive directly object mode, directly into object mode. Not, you know, that didn't, didn't take much time to me. Uh, what is the not object mode form of this? It's this. So it's either I like just, you know, every day, or I like something in particular. Right? What else? Oh yes, the object is the hanek because there are more than one cow here. Notice that in the dictionary it is an a and we don't have this one. But when it comes to the plural of this word from a we go to a because it's fun that way. All right. And because we are in object mode, we have to put a T, and obviously we have to put something between the K and the T sound, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to pronounce this. Tehenekt is not a real word, but Teheneket is better. Okay, now, so what have we, uh, what have we got here? Sereted? Okay, almost good, but Hungarian is always talking about particular cows when it comes to the, the word like. So we have to put the O, the equivalent of the, in the sentence. And this contradicts English. Or, I mean, this is very, very different from English. Okay, so this is a good sentence. Now let's review what, what we have learned so far. We learned that if we ask questions, it might, th that might be a better way, because without questions, just translating the words like the Google dictionary leads here to this sentence. But if we use the questions, it might lead us to this particular sentence, and if we are advanced in the Hungarian language, we might get this sentence. And after that, we just applied the same rule over and over again. We asked the, the, the necessary questions and we put the words together. We asked here again, we asked the necessary questions and put the words together. And this is the moral of today's story. We have to ask the necessary questions. Okay, next time if we are really lucky and I remember things, which I don't, but let's hope that I will do. Uh, this uh, next time we are going to take a look at a particular sentence in different tenses, which is not really complicated because Hungarian only has three tenses. So, thank you. And now that we learned some Hungarian, apparently there is nothing more to discuss today except the current things I want to talk about in the studio. So, people who do not like the studio part of the video may shut this off, but if you really want to hear me talking about stuff more and more, then obviously you can do that. So, let's go to the studio. Right, I know that. Uh, I know that. What I forgot. I forgot about the um, the um, Hungarian history stuff. I know because I, I wrote it down, but I, I just forgot it, and I don't really have more uh, more time to work with. So we're just gonna have to live with without it this week. But no worries. We'll go back to that next week. So anyway, I thank you for watching. I know I do that a lot, thanking people, but it's really an, it's really uh, a really nice experience. To be absolutely honest, so uh, there is a difference between the international market, or let's call you the international market, and uh, between this and the Hungarian market because we Hungarians don't really get enthusiastic about stuff so when I try 
this very same thing I uh, in Hungarian for Hungarians um, it didn't really work because no one got really interested and the ones uh, who did just um, you know I tried to be very smart and and just prove me wrong about news stuff and about everything but mostly people are not really interested in, in these things even though that they are free I I don't blame television but people in Hungary do tend to uh, watch a lot of television and uh, I didn't notice it until a couple of weeks ago but uh, mainstream media could be very very manip manipulative and mainstream media doesn't really talk about uh, things without actual news value I mean uh, they they think that uh, a, a country like Colombia doesn't really have any news value so from their perspective it's absolutely not necessary to talk about things like that but I, I like to know things like that and I, I um, I actually I I spoke to um, some people the other day or I don't know a month ago or something and we talked about that we in Hungary are surrounded by a lot of countries we're not surrounded by sea like New Zealand we are not surrounded by only two countries like the US you know Canada and Mexico or Mexico or um, I don't know even even Colombia uh, is surrounded by fewer countries than Hungary because we have the Czech Republic uh, Slovakia Ukraine Romania uh, Croatia uh, Slovenia Austria I think that's it I hope I haven't left out anybody but you know to tell the truth that's that's a lot of country and actually we don't know anything about these countries I don't know if it's believable or not but we don't know what the hell is going on in Czech, uh, the, in a Czech Republic or in Romania or whatever so there are no news um, our oil company uh, MOL it, it's, it spells M-O-L MOL uh, is, uh, has interest in um, Croatian uh, oil but we don't know anything about it I mean if you ask anybody well what does small do in Croatia well is small in Croatia it's just a Hungarian company they might say and yeah so what drives me is really this um, space left by the mainstream media and of course I like to share things with people so that's it this is what I wanted to talk about I believe I have an I have a, a topic which I've been dragging for quite a while it's about our two uh, major political party leaders Durchan Ferenc and um, the other one why don't I know the Prime Minister of Hungary? Orban Viktor. Ah, there you go. Me and names are two different things. So, uh, these two people, uh, politicians, uh, come from very, uh, very different households, very different uh, places, and very different financial status and it might help to understand you know understand uh, it might help the world to understand uh, why do they want things they do want 
for example if it's not uh, a secret but it's also not a fact that uh, Orban Viktor our current prime minister may want to be a historic person like Napoleon or uh, I don't know uh, or maybe Hitler but you know it is it's really not nice to compare anyone to Hitler he did such a good job uh, being the devil that in Europe it's it's not forbidden to talk about him but it's not really encouraged either so it's like when you say Hitler it's like Satan himself or herself who knows okay so let's get uh, back to uh, Orban Victor so he may want to you know uh, take up a role in in, uh, in the history books you know what role this is I don't know maybe he doesn't know I think that he want to compare himself to Matyash our greatest king ever not the greatest king in the world but in Hungary he was the best of the kings and uh, he did some really nice things and people liked him but we don't really like Orban Victor because these are modern times the these are different times so what uh, a king could have done in the time of the kings cannot be achieved in the time of democracy because democracy is about it's not about one person it's not about several people it's about everybody so prime ministers are, are coming and going any other deputies and other uh, role, other um, people politicians are coming and going constantly go away come back there are comebacks and disappearances I mean not like uh, Gestapo things just you know somebody disappears because you know, he stops being a politician or she stops being a politician and um, the thing is that he might want to achieve this through making other people's lives miserable because he doesn't really see this he uh, politicians in Hungary I like I like uh, uh, kings in the old ages or uh, princes actually there are a lot of stories about princes uh, the typical story is uh, a, um, uh, a prince lives happily but then somehow he gets dragged to the slums to, to among uh, to among ordinary citizens and he sees that uh, his father's kingdom is is not what it looks like to him so there is more into people than just uh, empty numbers and then when he faces reality he he learns the moral of the story and the story ends there are uh, fairy tales in modern times I believe like this Orban Victor could be the prince of our times uh, he maybe he means well but maybe uh, his way is a is a mistaken one is a is the wrong one but he doesn't realize this he thinks he does good he thinks he may think that he does good by defying the European Union or uh, just making additional taxes to people or raising previous taxes for example just an example um, I paid taxes uh, uh, sort of taxes uh, after my car uh, last year it may have been about 6,000 forints now it's 16,000 and um, this is because our country needs money and obviously uh, the country uh, the government uh, is desperately trying to gain more money for themselves because uh, last last week 
and this I think it's going to be in the next um, Hungarian project video but uh, just a little heads up uh, the Hungarian uh, the Hungarian Union sorry uh, the European Union uh, wants to uh, wants us to pay a fine because uh, our laws are against the constitution of the European Union uh, about um, 150 million forints or so 150 million forints is, is a huge amount of money it's insanely uh, big did I say million or billion because I the sum the in this uh, amount of money is in billions uh, 150 billion forints yeah I hope I did so it's like uh, a salary for for um, I don't know a thousand people or, or five thousand I, I didn't make the necessary calculations so I just you know to say stuff so that could be a problem now if we really want to be impartial about this then we may conclude uh, the way I just did that he means well but his, may, his ways are mistaken and does he need to go down does he need to resign uh, really yeah I think he should because uh, he tries his best uh, he tries to do his best actually but maybe it's not enough and it, there is no problem with this we are uh, we are different people uh, we have different skills and I think that he has no politician political skills because he's not very polite he doesn't lie very well and he th his only way uh, to just uh, process a mistake is seizing all communications with the citizens so right now Orban Victor doesn't do anything I do not hear about him he doesn't say things he doesn't make statements uh, like in this video he uh, he sends his you know colleagues to make uh, these statements so this is not a not the values of a good politicians this is not the way to do stuff if I I am right I can go uh, um, you know uh, I can go among the people and just do uh, you know just walk around them and they will like me because we are together in this but uh, he doesn't do this so he, he, he kinda acts like a prince maybe a spoiled prince I don't know but this doesn't look good I believe I mean so this is the end this wasn't a very long episode but I hope it was informative I I had a lot of things to do this week so this might not be the best episode I've made but uh, I try to collect more news for next week and just um, just you know do a better episode and still I if you have any questions like before just say so and uh, just write me an email or whatever because I like communicating with people and those of you who did um, actually told me very interesting stuff and you may think that whatever you want to do or say or write is not really interesting that's not really true uh, f to you maybe it's not interesting or to your friends but to me you know I don't live your life everything you do is different from what I do so if you find something interesting in what I say about Hungary and stuff that is exactly the level of interesting I have in your things okay so have a nice weekend or a week because 
you know, uh, a week will pass before the end, uh, before I uh, publish the next episode, and um, well, you know, keep breathing and stuff. <laughs>